What's going on, beautiful people? I take you guys uh, on a journey to basically the area that I live in. And while I'm taking you on a journey, I'm thinking of starting to make more of my videos like this because I get to walk and enjoy the beautiful scenery and the beautiful nature. Uh, and we get to talk. So, uh, it's first, not first snow, but it snowed like maybe a couple of weeks ago. It snowed a couple of weeks ago uh, or three weeks ago, but it was like a quick one. But this one looks like it's snowing right now and it's going to stay for good because the weather is, is getting colder and colder, uh, which is interesting. I like, I like all seasons. I prefer summer. I'm not going to fucking lie to you. I like being in my short shorts and my tank tops all the time as my official uniform in summer. But uh, there's a beauty in the winter, especially when it snows and it's white. It's really nice. Uh, so what I want to talk about in this video is how to accept yourself 100%. How do you accept who you are and embrace yourself? Uh, how do you have confidence? How do you, how do you accept yourself? How do you love yourself? Well, I hate to put things into categories, but I'm going to do it for the ease of convenience of having the conversation. You have two selves. Again, this is for the ease of conversation. It's much easier to just merge them into one, which is eventually what you should learn how to do. But you have two basic or two selves. You have your ego self and then you have the real self which is the awareness that is experiencing this ego self so you look at me right now the ego self in front of you that's called Saeed and uh, his occupation is a youtuber and he was born in Qatar and his parents are from Syria so he speaks Arabic this is my ego right and he's a gym guy that's another ego identification right he's he, he works out uh, he's, I've been doing yoga, so I guess now I'm a, I'm a yogi, <laughs> right? All these identifications, your ego identifications, uh, which are helpful to sort of navigate through life and necessary. It is necessary for us to have these ego identifications to navigate through life. It is necessary for you to experience this earthly existence with your ego. Without it, you wouldn't exist. So you don't want to kill your ego. That's just a, that's a common myth. Uh, and I don't know where people got that from. You can't kill your ego because you kill yourself. You want to kill your ego, go commit suicide. But don't do that because this life is, is beautiful. Why would you do that? Well, I understand why you would do that because society is a fucking mess. Uh, but once you unplug, you realize how beautiful this earthly existence is. And anyway, without going on rants and tangents here, back to what I was saying, the ego self. So in front of you here is this ego. But on a deeper level, if you go deeper into it, uh, you'll find that the real you is the awareness. It's the Atman, as they call it in, uh, in some Hindu practices, the Atman, the watcher, the awareness, the thing that knows everything and sees everything and merges with everything and is one with everything. And that is the real you. And that is that divine spark within you. That is that spirit of God, if you will, within you. Uh, that is the real you. The real you is simply experiencing this ego self temporarily for God knows how long. Um, so far, you know, our human life expectancy, the highest we've managed to get to was probably still not 100 yet. So you experience this ego self for a certain amount of time as your awareness, as this real self, right? And then you leave. It's a trip and then you leave it. It's a trip, a computer simulation, a spawn. <laughs> okay, if you wanna look at it, I like to look at life as a simulation, as a video game, and this is a spawn. So I'm having the spawn as Saeed Mobayed, right? And then you have the real you, the real self, the divine within you. And your job to accept yourself 100% is to reconcile both sides of, of, of you right uh if you want to go through life separating between the two you're gonna have some problems and you're gonna maybe even turn into like a golem 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 
from Lord of the Rings, right? You're gonna have a, um, a you know split personality they call it. Uh, but it's much easier to merge them. It's much easier to think of your current ego identification as part of your soul, the awareness, the consciousness, right? It is part of it. It's not all of it, but it's part of it. And think of your ego as a way for your awareness to spread love, joy, and happiness. So you gotta accept the ego. You gotta accept who you are right now. If you're four feet tall, you gotta accept that. If you're eight feet tall, you gotta accept that. You know, if you, if you think you have a big nose, you gotta accept that. If you think um, you're ugly, well, <laughs> First of all, I really think, physically speaking, I think very, very few people are quote-unquote ugly. Um, I really think most human beings are beautiful. And I think if they just put a smile on and they get more positive, they'll realize that actually, even physically, they're not ugly. So, but anyway, that's, that's, that's for another conversation. Uh, but if you think you're whatever, there's a flaw within you and you think it's ugly, you got to accept it. You gotta accept this ego self that you're in. You gotta accept this character that you're in and all that comes with it, right? Um, I remember growing up, uh, I really <sighs> hated being short, right? I was always the shortest kid in the class and I still am. I'm five, 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 six. So I had to accept that. And that remained an insecurity with me probably up until, you know, second or third year in my university. You know, I had this complex, right? I, I had this complex, this stature complex. Like I felt like I'm short, I have to overcompensate. Uh, and, you know, I'm sort of an underdog, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and the first step for me before even realizing that actually like that is not even the real me, is accepting that. I had to accept that, hey, okay, you know what? These are my cards. Let me see what I can do with this body that God has given me. It turns out I have a naturally agile, gymnastic type body, dancer type body. So you find something that is beautiful about your current circumstance, whatever it happens to be, right? If you feel insecure about it, actually it's probably a strength in another field. So eventually you'll find not only will you be able to accept the flaw, quote unquote, but also you'll be able to see that it could be a strength in some other area, some other uh, area in your life, right? But accepting your flaws or perceived flaws, I really want to emphasize on that. Most of your flaws are perceived. You perceive them as a flaw probably because someone told you that, a parent, a friend, while you were growing up as, as a child, a society as a whole, you know, because society has beauty standards and so if you're, say, a girl and you had um, a big nose and that was not, you know, the beauty standards in the magazines, you might have grown up with a complex now. I have a big nose, I'll never be good enough. It's something as simple as that, right? can actually haunt people for the rest of their lives. Crazy, crazy, really crazy. So first, accept your perceived flaws. Because look, right now you're perceiving them as flaws and therefore they're flaws because you perceive them that way. And you got to accept it. You gotta look at yourself in the mirror, like I did, <laughs> and be like, bro, you're a short motherfucker. What are you gonna do about it? Accept it. Make fun of it. Make fun of yourself. Call yourself a midget, right? When you're talking, when, you know, I have a friend, we always fuck around with each other, and he always makes these midget jokes about me, right? He knows who he is, I love him. And, uh, and I make big nose jokes on him, you know, because he's got a big nose. So, <laughs> right? I'm like, you know, I got to accept these perceived or maybe very real flaws. Like, you know, walking around in society, I'm shorter than most men. I am, right? Um, here in Canada, at least. If I was to go back into Syria or Italy or Greece or one of these countries, I'd be pretty much average, slightly below maybe. Uh, but here, it is real. It's not just perceived flaw. It is real. I am shorter than most men. And women prefer taller guys that is a fact that is a fact that I had to accept as well and once I've accepted it 
And once I've embraced it, once I've realized, hey, you know, okay, fine. That's just not only am I going to accept it, I'm going to fucking joke about it. I'm going to make jokes on it. And um, things got better, man, because I started to become more authentic. See, we have to accept these flaws in our ego to allow our most authentic self to express. Your most authentic self will not express himself or herself until you've accepted your ego's flaws, whether they're real or perceived, you see? Um, so again, back to my example, right? In here, in Canada, my flaw of being short is very real. It, it is there because I compare to the rest of the society that I'm in. So it's not just perceived, it's real. Um, you accept that, but it could be perceived. You might think you have a, some sort of a flaw, but it's, it's not. You might actually think you have a big nose, but actually it's like average. You know, but all these things, all these little things can haunt people, man. That's why I'm talking about it, right? It can really haunt people. So, accept your flaws. That's number one. Accept your perceived or real flaws, whatever they happen to be. Embrace them and say, hey, it is what it is. God has given me this. Maybe on a soul level, I've chosen this. You know, when I just made the choice to accept whatever flaws that I thought I have or blah, blah, blah. I didn't know about this whole, I didn't even know like I was an awareness, I was a consciousness, a soul. I, I didn't know that. So, but now I can understand that actually, wait, we choose these characters on a soul level. When we come to incarnate in this video game, we choose these characters. So then, you know, um, I've chosen this. So, fuck you, <laughs> accept it <laughs> and make the most of it. And you know what? Since I've, since I made this, I've, I've been making the most of it, man. And uh, for you guys who have been following me, probably a lot of you found me on the fitness channel. You guys know how badass I am when it comes to the body, right? So, hey, you know, you embrace it, then you make the most of it after. After that, you start to... The, let's get to the, a bit of an emotional problems, right? A lot of us identify with our past. Uh, and that could be pretty dark for a lot of us or perceived or real. It doesn't matter if it's perceived or real, right? Somebody might have gotten sexually abused. Somebody might have been physically abused like I was physically abused, you know, and uh, domestic violence. Uh, somebody might have been bullied. Somebody might have been um, called a dirt bag by someone that you really admired and, you know, a teacher perhaps or something or something embarrassing might have happened to you you might have shit your pants somewhere and everybody was looking at you and that was a embarrassing moment that is like you're still identified with up until now because you think that's who you are and um, you know lots of lots of horror horror <laughs> whether it's real perceived horror stories that we identify with in the past because we think that's who we are Right? Because we, we've been taught to identify in, or we've been trained just by the virtue of modern society because we're always thinking about the future, the future, the future. So by default, we're also thinking about the past, the past, the past. And we're never present. And we're identifying who we are now in the present moment with something that has already happened. Now, granted, that might have left a big emotional uh mark on you i mean if you get sexually abused as a child jesus christ that is a big load to carry around man or you know woman if you're a woman watching this even even worse for a woman that is a big load to carry right that is you know walking around in life that is a big load to carry and that, that's going to take a lot out of you as the person to let go of that it will take it's going to be a, a, a painful process but you, you must embark on that process. You must embark on the process of letting go of your past, of letting go of those horror, doom and gloom stories that you have had happened in your past. Now, most of us have, have not gone to the extreme of being sexually abused, thank God. Most of us hopefully watching this. Um, so, but we, we still have some sort of a story that, it, that was terrifying to us when we were growing up. Um, and... Speaking of terrifying stories, uh, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna share this story with you guys. I've never shared it with anyone. 
uh, only my mom knows. Back in grade eight, when I first came to Canada, and it was snowing and it, it was a, it was really like complete shock to my system, and I was getting sick and I was vomiting and and you know the, everything is different and and the cold was really getting to me. I was not used to that, and I remember going back home and I shit my pants. <laughs> <laughs> I shit my pants, okay? And I was so afraid in school that I was gonna shit my pants and I kept holding it, holding it, holding it, holding it, holding it, holding it. And then I tried to go to the bathroom and then and then I couldn't fucking, for some reason, take a shit. And then um, on my way back home, it happened only like literally two minutes before I was at home. So luckily nobody saw it. But it could very well have happened. I just, I could, I lost complete control over my bowel movements. It was a crazy time, man. That first year for me in Canada, it was a crazy time. I should probably make a separate video for my experience here, like when I first came here. Um, but, you know, <laughs> that's just a comic relief. Um, I really think, yeah, like a lot of us still hold on to a lot of like baggage from the past. And it might be harder, f like, it might be harder for some to let go of things because they left a more emotional um, despair and mark on them and causing them to have all these self-defense mechanisms, uh, inability to experience pleasure, inability to experience full-out orgasm, lots of problems, right? You must learn how to or embark on the journey of letting go of the past, of letting go of everything that has happened to your ego self because we're still in the, in the realm of ego here right we're still in the realm of ego what happened to you in the past that's what happened to this ego character right here and you're carrying now with you right now right as information in a, in a form of memory and you must face those memories okay face them let go you're gonna have emotional bursts outs of key of tears of anger of frustration and this is why catharsis is so, so, so goddamn key, man. It is so important for um, us as a society to allow, to have these places where we do catharsis. My favorite place to do catharsis is nature, right? If I have a lot of tears that I need to let go of, I usually come to nature. If I have um, frustration that I need to let go of, I go to nature. If I have lots of joy that I need to express, I go to nature, right? So finding that outlet for you to let go of your emotions and forgive yourself because most of us are blaming ourselves. Like even if you've been sexually abused as a child, you're probably blaming yourself for it. And that's what's crazy, right? You are a child. That you, ha you have to have compassion for yourself. You had absolutely... And even if you weren't, even if, if you... Even if you've done something ter terrible yourself and you were conscious, you weren't even a child, you're going to be able to forgive yourself because most of, most of these loops that we get stuck in in the past, most of them are things that we didn't have conscious control over. Most of them are childhood issues, so we didn't even have control over it, but we blame ourselves. If you've been, say, sexually abused as a child, you're blaming yourself, like, I shouldn't have done this, I shouldn't have done that, like... I'm worthless now because someone else humiliated me and took advantage of me and I was weak and vulnerable. So you close off, you don't want to be vulnerable anymore, right? And it, it shuts you down from experiencing the present moment. And it's, like I said, all compassion to you people, everybody, whatever your story in the past is, you know, we all have them. Um, embark on the journey. It's going to take time to let go, but let go you will and let go you must. You must let go of your past. You must learn how to. You must let go of the emotions. In order for you to stop identifying with the, with the, with the memory, because all these pasts are now memory, they're not really you. Anything that's transient and changing is not really you at heart, right? Again, we're still talking about accepting the ego self here. We're not even, we haven't even delved into the real you. Um, so once you just stop identifying with your past stories and you stay present right here in the now, Things will get much better, right? Things will get much better. You'll be able to experience joy, happiness, laughter, um, and you'll just feel better, okay? Uh, now, future is another thing. 
um, worrying about the future I it's more more of a fear based thing rather than something that you identify with right um, but once you identify with you who what you're doing right now that's beautiful you've gotten really far now now to the real you you know after a fucking 20 minute rant <laughs> after a 20 minute rant let's talk about the real you the real you anything that is transient anything that is always changing that is not really you that is your ego you you're experiencing it and we talked about the importance of accepting the ego you right now who you are as this character but anything that is always changing and transient it's not really you you're an eternal being you're you're I am not I'm at, at the core of it I'm not Saeed at the core of it if I was to look you in the eye and look you in the soul <sighs> It would be my my consciousness looking tr through your consciousness. It wouldn't be Saeed anymore. It wouldn't. Because I know that's not me. Because Saeed is always changing. Saeed was a little kid at some point, And he was vulnerable. And he couldn't defend himself. Right? And he was this and that. And now Saeed is this guy. Pretty badass. Right? Pretty badass. I know I'm a pretty badass guy right now. I know it. I know it. Um... But Saeed, when he's 90s, maybe a fucking hunched over old man that can't even, can't, can't, can't even like bend over to tie his shoes. So he needs someone else's help. You see? So is that then if I, that's constantly changing then, right? And yeah, right now I'm this, you know, badass gym guy, you know, like really badass, like pretty badass, you know, in, in every way, shape or form. But if I'm too identified with that, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to I'm gonna die at some point, right? I'm gonna die. That's a, that's the moral of the story. You're gonna die. So are you your body? Are you this character? Then if that character is gonna cease to exist, you already know it's gonna cease to exist. There's no other way around it. This body you're in, this meat body is gonna cease to exist. It it will. It absolutely will. So is that really you? And that's what I'm saying. That's not really you. It's very important to accept that part of you, that ego that you're experiencing. But you are the awareness. You are that divine being. You are that eternal soul. You are that eternal stream of consciousness, that stream of information, that divine godly being. And that is who you really are. And you're experiencing this character. You're experiencing this ego right now. That is really all. You're experiencing it. So if you're experiencing something, Embrace it. Embrace this character that you're experiencing and embrace it 110%, man. 110% and do it your way. Do it Saeed's way. Do it your character's way. And understand at a deeper level, it's not really who you are. So don't identify with it too much. Just like somebody who's in, an, who's in a movie, right? Somebody who's in a movie and takes on the role. And, you know, method acting, they take on the role seriously. You take on the role seriously, but they know that it, there's, they know there's a camera out there filming the movie, even though they're really seriously into the character right now and they're really identified with the character, right? Like Robert De Niro is a method actor. So, you know, when he gets in a character, he gets really identified with the character. But he knows deep down that there's a camera there recording him. In the same way, get in this character. But just recognize there's a camera there recording you. It's a movie. Life is a movie. It's a, it's a game. It's a video game. It's a movie, right? So recognize that there's a camera recording you. Take the character seriously. Or I don't like the word seriously, but take it. Go into it. Go it at heart. But just know it's not really you. It's a mask. It's a mask. The real you, that is God. That is powerful. That is almighty. That is all-knowing. And that, it, that's very important to know and feel on a daily basis, okay? So, hopefully this helps you guys. Um, this was a long rant, but I feel like it's needed. That's it. Check out my free book, Five Powerful Habits to Dominate Life in All Areas. My hands are frozen. I need to get gloves. I need to get gloves. Um, as always, don't forget to subscribe. Oh, actually, you know what? I love you guys. I forgot to tell, uh, I forgot to tell you guys that. I love you. But don't forget to subscribe or you're going to sleep with the fishes.